The first thing that comes into mind when people are deciding whether to write the United States Medical License Exam that the US MLE is um, usually uh, people consider how difficult the exam is or how hard the exam is. Um, that is a legitimate question because uh, before you go into anything, you have to know what is at stake for you. Uh, my name is Jerry. Um, I currently live in the United States, I live in Texas and um, I am an international medical graduate and uh, I have been successful on the step one and then the step two of the United States medical license exam and currently I am at the stage of interviewing for postgraduate year one PGY1 position in internal medicine and so I have the experience and what it takes to uh, guide you and also tell you my experience uh, during the whole process. So uh, the United States Medical License Exam, you will hear people call it USMLE, USMLE, USMLE is difficult, um, it's hard, uh, it's involving, time consuming, like it's, it's, there are different ways people describe it. Yes, uh, people have different experiences, uh, but yes, um, so come to think about it, um, if you want to think about uh, the most difficult exam in the world, some people think is the USMLE, but that would mean that you have to take a pool of like several hundreds of exams in the world and um, assess them and um, conduct your own analysis. But um, that notwithstanding, um, from my experience and from that of many people, we can say that the United States Medical License Exam is one of the most difficult exams in the world and being uh, successful on it, it um, uh, takes a lot of uh, hard work to um, get to that level. And so, um, for those who don't have a lot of information about it, you can read about it. But um, what I want to tell you is that uh, basically the United States Medical License Exam, the USMLE, is the exam that you need to write. Or most medical students um, in the world will have to write in order to be able to practice medicine independently in the United States. So if you schooled as a medical student in the US and then you want to go into practice, then you have to write a USMLE. If you are also someone who schooled in another country and you want to come and practice medicine independently in the United States, then you have to also write the USMLE. Um, in order to um, be able to practice independently. Now, um, so now we've talked about like um, the United States being one of the most difficult exams in the world, yes. Now, let me take um, some few minutes to uh, talk about um, the various uh, steps in this exam. So the USMLE itself has uh, three different steps. We call them step one, step two, step three. Now, step one exam tests basically basic um, concepts of medicine um, from um, like pathology, pathophysiology, like different subjects that I can uh, mention later. But now, when um, you are studying for this exam, it's, um, it's a whole new thing. Um, it takes a lot of um, determination and uh, effort to um, be successful on this exam. Um, not only the step one, but for all the steps, but they all have different difficulty. The step one uh, exam has um, about 280 questions and it's divided into uh, 40 question blocks and there are eight of those um, in the step one. Um, actually, there are about, there are seven in the step one there are eight in step two, and then you have about uh, 45 minutes to one hour break to spread in between them. So it's almost like you spending the whole day, you go there at eight o'clock and then you are coming home like five o'clock, You like the whole day is writing the exam. And um, they don't only test your knowledge, but they test your resilience. They test how you can focus, how you can work under pressure and the questions being allowed 280 and then they provide you with multiple choice questions sorry the multiple choice answers that you need to select from and these multiple choice answers they are not just um, anything that you can easily um, um, eliminate they are very close answers and so you have to really know your concepts in order to be able to make a very good choice 
Now, if you are successful on the step one, then you can proceed to step two. As some people can take step two before step one, it's also allowed. Um, but if you fail one step, then you have to repeat that step. But it is not a very good thing because it affects your chances of matching into the residency program that you want. You can you can match into the programs, but um, you get limited chances since some of the programs wouldn't review the applications of people who have failed a step uh, in their journey. Now, the step two exam is also made of a 40 question blocks and um, it is um, each of the blocks is one hour like the uh, step one, but in this time it is eight blocks of 40 questions and it is nine hours exam in all. You have eight hours to, for the test itself and you have one hour to spread in between uh, for the breaks. So also very lengthy. They are using the whole day to um, to write this exam and um, it's exhausting. Um, you need to replenish your energy, like mental focus, mental alertness, are very, very important in this exam. The step three exam. Um, so before I talk about the step three, I want to say that for step two, it was divided into two. We had the step two CS, which is the, um, the clinical skills. And also we have the clinical knowledge. The clinical knowledge is what you go into the test center and then write with multiple choice questions, as I said. But with the CS, it used to be you go into the hospital and then they give you a patient and then you clock the patient, come up with your diagnosis and your plan and you are scored for that. But since last year, I think 2020, uh, 2021, the step one, um, uh, the step two CS has been scrapped and now it has been replaced by a pathways that you need so for these pathways also you need a physician or so each of the part like there are different pathways and um, depending on there are about six pathways depending you can read on it on the on the um, usmld website if you are if you need those pathways especially for the imgs and depending on what you qualify for um, for I can talk about pathway one and pathway six, which I did. So for pathway one is for people who are already practicing in, in their home countries and they hold the license to their own, uh, the license from their own countries practicing medicine. So they use pathway one. For pathway six, you find physicians who also assess how you can take history and then they score you. Okay, now, um, so that's, clinical skills has been replaced now with the pathways and also you are also um, supposed to write the uh, occupational English test which is the OET um, before you can apply for residency and for step three it has to is two exams uh, or two days exam and um, each of them um, it's uh, the first day you use nine hours, the second day you use eight hours, and in total they all have 500 questions. And most people think that step one is the most difficult um, since it's very broad and um, followed by step two and followed by step three. And most of the residency programs um, do not require that you write step three before you apply. You can, you can apply and then march and then write the step three before you graduate some of them have different policies like you have to write by the end of your first year a residency and so on um, so this is basically how the exam is now let's talk about what the exam is testing now um, for step one basically the, it's testing about your uh, basic sciences and how you can uh, integrate those um, basic science knowledge into a clinical uh, practice. So um, they talk, they te they, the step one deals with um, like, I can, like pharmacology, physiology, and microbiology, immunology, uh, anatomy and embryology, genetics, and also all the other uh, major uh, systems that uh, we have like uh, cardio, respiratory, um, musculoskeletal, uh, GI, neuro, and all that. 
Um, so uh, that makes it very broad. Um, I mean, all the specialties that you can talk about in medicine have uh, part of it in the step one, and it makes it uh, very difficult. And you need to really understand um, all the materials or enough materials to be able to uh, pass the step one. So the syllabus is very, very broad and very substantial for uh, the step one. And it takes only someone who is very determined, someone who is uh, able to study smart in order to be able to uh, pass this exam. Now, um, the timeline is also very uh, important uh, because um, for students in the U.S. or students, uh, IMGs who want to take the exam by second year, um, you don't get a separate time to uh, sit for and study for this exam. You have to study for it whilst you are um, studying your medical school curriculum. So it makes it uh, very uh, difficult. Now, uh, in my case, I completed uh, my medical school six years before starting to study for the U.S. MLA. So I didn't have to deal with um, school curriculum. I only focus on the uh, U.S. Um, MLE itself and even though it took me some time to be able to uh, prep for it, um, but at the end I was um, still able to um, do it. The best thing is to do it whilst you are in school, but uh, that is not the only way to go um, about it. Now, um, so I can also talk about uh, one thing that makes it's um, very uh, difficult is um, like especially for those who are uh, graduates already uh, because um, if you in my case uh, I started by going solo uh, I'll stay home and study all by myself and um, it was very difficult um, I was seeing things from only my angle there are certain things that I didn't really understand but um, I didn't have uh, anything much to do about it and um, sometimes I'll just brush them off and those are the things that wouldn't make your scores improve um, so when like it got to some point I decided that okay let me get a study partner I tried different people and I finally settled on one person that worked for me and so um, that is very important um, you can uh, also try that so if you are going to be studying all by yourself and all these uh, resources uh, by yourself you want to read all the first eight concepts by yourself like how are you going to memorize all of them it's very difficult so surrounding yourself with people um, who are taking the usmle would also help you don't necessarily have to be uh, do it physical but you can um which could be online like my study partner was um in canada when we were studying and i was in the us we did it um we stopped um we used um, skype most of the time and um, facetime um, and it worked for us so it's something that you can consider so um, the USMLE in a nutshell I'll say is very difficult it's hard but there's nothing on this planet that is impossible uh, people have done it they've been successful you don't have to be a genius in order to be able to pass the exam you should be able to um, study smart be resilient um, you should uh, have some focus um, in order to be able to write uh, this exam and pass so um thanks very much for watching this video and i know you can do it um, because we have done it and good luck in your studies if you haven't started studying the time is now and by the time you realize you would have done it too Thanks for watching this video once again. Subscribe and share to anyone who would benefit from this video. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.